Hello everybody and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today's Creation Myth is the myth that Homo sapiens originated in the Middle East. And to be clear, this is not true. To introduce this topic, let's start with one thing and be very clear about it. Homo sapiens originated in East Central Africa between two and 300,000 years ago. This is super duper not up for debate. Humans originated in Africa, period, full stop, the end. Creationists claim that Homo sapiens actually originated in the Middle East, because they have to, because that's the, the interpretation of scripture, of Genesis. If Eden is located somewhere in the Middle East, then humans had to have come from there, not Sub-Saharan Africa. And this map kind of shows this. This is a screen capture from a video by uh, Young Earth creationist YouTuber Raw Matt. Here is uh, the illustration of the human migratory paths. I think this is supposed to be a little arc right there where everyone got off the arc and then radiated around the world. So this shows the creationist idea that you have a Middle East uh, origin, the arc lands still somewhere in that neighborhood, and then you have subsequent radiation from there. So let's talk about all the reasons creationists are wrong. Now, first and foremost, there is the fossil evidence. Now, I'm not a fossil specialist, uh, so I'm not going to go into all the details of the different species and the different fossil sites and what they mean and the relationships. We're not going to do that. What I'm just going to show you here is that the oldest known remains for Homo sapiens are all in Africa, right? So you've got 120,000 years, 160,000 years ago, 195,000 years ago, and then this one's a little more controversial, but you've got 300,000 years ago. So you put this evidence together and the conclusion is very clear. Homo sapiens originated within Africa, pretty cut and dry. But I'm all about the genetic evidence, so let's put the fossils aside and let me tell you how everything we know about human genetics points to an African origin for Homo sapiens. And before we go any further, I am going to cover four major lines of evidence. There is a lot more evidence than these lines that I'm just not going to cover because I want to keep this relatively short. But for example, you could trace specific alleles and see how they leave Africa and come back into Africa. You could look at the relationship between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. You could do lots of different comparisons and it all points to a Sub-Saharan African origin for Homo sapiens. So keeping that in mind, I'm only going to cover four major lines of evidence here. I'm going to talk about the diversity of Homo sapiens. I'm going to talk about the phylogenetic structure heterozygosity, and something called linkage disequilibrium. So to start, let's look at the diversity of Homo sapiens. You find the highest genetic diversity within African populations and less diversity as you move away from Africa. This is indicative of an African origin followed by migration outwards, because as you migrate, you have what are called founder events. So you have a big population and then a little bit migrates away. Well, that little bit is going to have less genetic diversity than the big or parent population. And so you migrate from Africa into the Middle East and then into Central Asia and Europe and South Asia, and then from there, East Asia and all over the place, uh, Oceania, the Americas, right? And every step in that pathway represents a founder event where you lose genetic diversity. So you expect to find the most genetic diversity where the population originated. And what do we find? We find that within Africa. So here are uh, some data from 2002. So this is not long after the completion of the Human Genome Project. We have a nucleotide diversity across the x-axis and proportion of subsamples across uh, up the y. And we have three curves for uh, Asian, European, and African. And we see that African populations tend to have higher genetic diversity. But this is a little bit outdated and it's kind of broad strokes. So we can look at a more recent finding, a more recent data set that is a little more granular. And here, each plus sign represents an individual. And what we have here is variant sites per genome in millions. So basically, how many variations do they have in their genome? And like I said, we expect more variants within African populations. And that's exactly what we see. So the African samples have much higher variation than the samples from anywhere else in the world, again, indicating an African origin for Homo sapiens. The second line of evidence for an African origin for Homo sapiens is the phylogenetic structure of Homo sapiens. Basically, non-African genetic diversity represents a subset of African diversity. In other words, phylogenetically, if you make your phylogenetic tree, the non-African lineages are nested within the African clade. So you have a common ancestor 
that was from Africa, and they've got lots of African populations descended from that. And within that tree, you also have all the non-African lineages nested within the overall uh, set of diversity that's present within Africa. This structure is only possible with an African common ancestor for all extant humans. You can't put Middle Eastern ancestor or European or an Asian or any other kind of ancestor and make that phylogenetic structure work. So here is an example of this. There's lots of trees like this that you can find online. I like this one because it's color coded, so it's relatively easy to follow. So if you follow this tree, starting right here, this node right there, that's the root for the human part of the tree, I should say for the homo sapien part of the tree, that represents the common ancestor of all humans. Red indicates African lineages, and all the other colors indicate all the other uh, lineages throughout the world. So Asian, uh, orange is European here, then green represents uh, American, you can see there were multiple migrations into the Americas. So what we see is we have an African common ancestor, and then everything else is descended from that common ancestor. Everything else is nested within the clade that has that African common ancestor. So all the outside of Africa diversity is a subset of the within Africa diversity. The third line of evidence we can look at is heterozygosity. Heterozygosity is when an individual has two different alleles at a particular locus. So at a site in their genome, they got mom's copy, they got dad's copy. Are they the same or are they different? If they're different, they are heterozygous. Now, when you have migrations, founder events, and small populations, that leads to lower heterozygosity because things like inbreeding and genetic drift lead to a loss of allelic diversity and you end up with more homozygosity. So just like we saw with diversity as a whole, we could also look at heterozygosity and we will see heterozygosity at the highest where humanity originated. And where do we find that? As you might expect, we have the highest heterozygosity in African populations. So on the y-axis here, we have a bunch of populations and they're all color-coded, so red is Africa and so on down the line. And on the x-axis, we have heterozygosity. So up here, we have our highest heterozygosity in our African populations, and it decreases outside of Africa, and not randomly. It decreases with distance from Africa. So if you're like kind of close to Africa, like Central Asia or the Middle East, eh, you're still kind of up there, but it's not as high. But if you're further from Africa, like East Asia, Oceania, or the Americas, it's noticeably lower, right? So not just do we have the highest heterozygosity within Africa, but we have distant dependent decreases in heterozygosity as you move away from Africa. Exactly what you would expect from an African origin for Homo sapiens. And finally, we can look at a measure called linkage disequilibrium. Basically, this is the non-random association of alleles at different loci. So like, for example, if you have red hair, you're also likely to have freckles. Those two traits are linked genetically, right? That's linkage. Now, what we can do is we can look at sites all over the genome and see, do they tend to be linked together within a population or are they more or less random with regard to each other? When they tend to be linked together in a population, that's called linkage disequilibrium. It indicates that a population uh, is smaller historically, that it is inbred, or that it has been subject to genetic drift. And the founder event I mentioned earlier, like when a small population splits off a big one, that is a type of genetic drift. So what we see when we look at the linkage disequilibrium of various human populations is that the further a group is from East Central Africa, the higher their linkage disequilibrium. The closer a group is to East Central Africa, the more at equilibrium they are, basically the more well shuffled their genome is. And this figure shows this really clearly. So on the y-axis, we have haplotype heterozygosity, which is a measure of linkage equilibrium, the opposite of disequilibrium. And on the x-axis, I think this is really clever, they have distance to AA, which is Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. So what you can see here is the African lineages in red, followed by Middle East, Europe, Central Asia, have the highest linkage equilibrium, the lowest disequilibrium. And then as you move away from Africa into East Asia, Oceania, and the Americas, you have an increase in disequilibrium, which is to say they have lower haplotype heterozygosity. 
and you could just draw the straight line. It's a nice linear data set here. You can draw the straight line and put an arrow on it, and it points right back to where humanity originated in East Central Africa. This is strong evidence indicating the epicenter of human diversity is located in East Central Africa, which means the origins of humanity is East Central Africa. Now, creationists have not been silent on these issues. They have a number of rebuttals that uh, they claim get around these problems. The first of these supposed rebuttals is created heterozygosity. This is the idea that God created Adam and Eve in highly heterozygotic states. So for each uh, locus in Adam or Eve, they had two different alleles. So you can get uh, up to four alleles in those two individuals. And then these highly heterozygotic uh, parent populations, they would migrate around the world. You had more migration into Africa than anywhere else. And then during the course of these migration events, you have losses of diversity via founder events, inbreeding, and drift. So that explains the patterns that we observe in the modern world. You may be thinking there are some problems with this, and you are absolutely correct. So the first problem is that created heterozygosity is assumed with zero evidence. There's no evidence of any created creation mechanism that gets you to heterozygotic uh, genotypes. There's, there's just, it's just a made up uh, fix for the problems associated with the, the human genetics and how they're incompatible with young earth creationism. Uh, the other problem here, more technical problem, is that even if you assume created heterozygosity, that's insufficient to explain uh, the diversity seen in human loci with many alleles. So there are human genes, for example, that have hundreds of different alleles. How do you get from four ancestral alleles to several hundred? In theory, recombination could do it, but recombination within genes is relatively uncommon. It tends to happen in the uh, regions between genes. Creations may also say that mutations could explain it. So you start with a baseline level of diversity, and then there are mutations that, that increase that level of diversity. But this is in contradiction with the creationist argument that mutations are overwhelmingly destructive and in general do not create new functional information, and certainly not new functional alleles in protein-coding genes. But that's the kind of thing that would be required in order to make this mechanism work. Another huge problem for created heterozygosity is that it doesn't explain the phylogenetic structure of humanity, because regardless of how you futz with the genetic diversity around the world, the root would still have to be Middle Eastern, not African, right? You go back to that phylogeny, and the common ancestor would have to be located in the Middle East, not Africa. So all that stuff I told you before about the nesting, about the heterozygosity, about the linkage disequilibrium, all that would have to point to an origin in the Middle East instead of Africa, and created heterozygosity doesn't get you around that problem. Another fix that creationists invoke to fix the problems with their model is hypermutation in African lineages. They're saying, well, the African lineages mutate faster. That explains why they're more diverse. And in theory, yes, that could explain why the African lineages are more diverse, but there are problems with this. First, this is, like created heterozygosity, assumed with no evidence. Uh, Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson, a young earth creationist associated with uh, Answers in Genesis, actually has proposed that certain African lineages mutate faster than other Homo sapiens lineages, but he uh, has not tested that hypothesis and seems to think it's other people's job to do it, which is not how science works. Um, Hypermutation in African lineages also does not explain the phylogenetic structure with uh, the African common ancestor and the non-African groups nesting within that. And finally, it actually contradicts the linkage pattern, because if you have African lineages and they're all experiencing mutations, well, those mutations are going to be at linkage disequilibrium within those specific lineages. So you would see higher linkage disequilibrium within these African lineages than you actually see. So it actually contradicts the observed pattern that we see in the data. So these creationist attempts to reconcile a Middle East origin with the genetic data we have for extant Homo sapiens fall completely on their face. They completely fail. They do not work. So to summarize, creationists claim that humans originated in the Middle East, but this is contradicted by all available genetic data. There's more diversity in Africa than there is anywhere else in the world. The phylogenetic structure of humanity points to an African common ancestor. There is more heterozygosity within African populations than non-African populations. 
And in terms of linkage disequilibrium, we see the highest degree of mixing within Africa and the most dis disequilibrium outside of Africa pointing to an African origin, plus the fossils. Don't forget the fossils. Those are really robust evidence on their own. I just don't have the experience and the knowledge to talk about them in any amount of detail, but don't sleep on the fossils. So did Homo sapiens originate in the Middle East? No, that is a creation myth. And in my opinion, a particularly silly one. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Don't get fooled.